Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. Uh, this is the continuation of my previous video tutorial. There we had created this project Hello Spring MBC Web App. And this is pretty simple application which is having a, a one controller and, uh, and that is got whole Hello World controller and uh, uh, we have a deployment descriptor that is also called web.xml there we have configured dispatcher servlet which works as a controller a spring controller and we have a, a spring web configuration file right so naming convention of this spring uh, uh, configuration file is uh, you will have to follow like this if your servlet name is dispatcher then you will have to uh, name your configuration file as dispatcher hyphen servlet.xml but if you don't want to adhere with the default naming then you have provision to specify uh, this configuration file name anything else whatever you want but there is some tweak over here so you will have to you will have to modify your web.xml and that is the my next video session there i'll show you so how to uh, name this uh, web configuration file whatever you want you don't want to adhere with the default naming convention that is the servlet name hyphen servlet.xml so that we will discuss in next video tutorial and finally we have a welcome page dot jsp welcome page dot jsp they are just we are displaying a, a model data which is coming this message is coming from the r controller right that is hello world controller so here i'm gonna refactor this code so basically in real scenario what will you happen you will have a presentation layer and uh, and from there request will go to the so here presentation layer we don't have anything presentation layer basically only we have a finally welcome page that is you can say presentation layer but uh, just we are hitting some url right so and uh, that url basically invokes this request handler method welcome method and this message this long string message this message we are sending to the uh, ui right on presentation layer with this key and this is our uh, uh, UI page right uh, this is our view view name that is logical view name so basically welcome page is the logical view name and uh, basically controller will search the welcome.jsp how that becomes welcome.jsp that we will discuss basically here what we have done uh, we have registered internal resource view resolver right uh, actually uh, when you uh, hit some URL then what basically happens uh, request will be intercepted by the this dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet basically contacts to the handler mapping and handler mapping basically finds the particular handler so right so and that will contact to the appropriate method so this in this method in this uh, request like when you uh, uh, hit that url then http call on your uh, port number then slash localhost or whatever is your host name and slash uh, application context name right your project name then basically and this con on controller level we have given the slash so basically this method will get inv invoked we are sending request through the gate so this method will be invoked and this response will be sent to this url this page basically ui page right this is view page so that's the basically flow and here what i'm going to do i'm going to refactor this code so here in basically we will have a presentation layer from presentation layer ui we presentation layer is called also ui from ui you send the request to the controller a controller will uh, interact with the some service layer and service service will call to the doll layer and doll will interact with the database so flow will be like this but here just i am not going to create any doll layer but i am going to create a service component right so here what i am going to do i'll create a separate class i would get I would give the class name hello uh, hello world uh, service something like that so this is the class name and package name I'm gonna specify com dot infotech dot service sorry service and uh, I'm going to annotate this class at the rate service so in real scenario you can have a you can delegate call from service to doll layer but doll layer i'm not going to make as of now so in maybe in uh, future tutorial we'll have a doll layer as well so here i'm going to specify public a string welcome message something like that 
and this guy is going to return us message simple message string message and that message I would like to set this message nothing but this message so this message we are going to get from the service layer right and this class I have annotated at the rate service this is a stereotype annotation now this class I am going to auto wire in this controller so here I am going to declare this at the rate private hello world then you can auto wire these things and before this variable name you may use at the rate auto wire right and this variable you can use now this will be automatically instantiated by the controller now I am going to call uh, get sorry welcome message right this is the service method just we are making call to the here and I am going to I am going to declare one more methods over here and here I am going to specify URL pattern as something like and I would say uh, welcome again welcome again and I would say welcome again URL pattern I am going to specify okay welcome again alright so we have a two methods now and here so what I am going to do uh, so this service method we have uh, service class we haven't saved that's why this error was coming and I'm going to create a uh, welcome again message this method I'm all also going to create in the service layer so let's create this method as well and this method also going to return a string I would say a uh, little different message welcome again to a spring mbc something like this right and uh, uh, this as we have created this service uh, class in the separate package so we have to register this package for auto scanning so we have a tag context colon component scan and base package we can specify so that uh, this annotation will be taken care by the spring container right so this class will be instantiated because we have annotated this class as a at the rate service and let's try to run this application again and see what output we get so when we run this application then first of all uh, this controller uh, request handler method will be invoked and this whatever and this method will be invoked and we will get message like welcome to spring mbc and if you uh, uh, if you invoke this if you want to could like to invoke this method this method which has the url pattern this then we'll have to hit this url and we get the message right so we have a two request handler method as of now right and we have a service layer but uh, from service we can make call to the DAW layer DAW is missing so that will have a in future video tutorial now let's uh, understand try to flow of the uh, spring mbc with the help of this uh, hello world example and uh, this uh, diagram so you can see in the diagram as uh, we talked earlier spring mbc helps in building flexible and loosely coupled web application the model view controller architecture helps in separating the business logic presentation logic and navigation logic models are responsible for encapsulating the application data the views renders response to the user with the help of model object controllers are responsible for receiving the request from the user and calling the backend services right so in this diagram you can see when a request is sent to the spring mbc framework the following events happens the dispatcher sublet first basically the dispatcher sublet first receives the request and consults the handler mapping so something is called handler mapping so that uh, consults the handler mapping and works the controller associated with the request the controller basically the controller process the request by calling the appropriate service methods and returns the model and view object to the dispatcher servlet right as we have seen in the hello world example 
the dispatcher server sends the view name to the view resolver to find the actual view to invoke so if you can see in our example uh, we had a, a spring web configuration file we are here we have given the uh, prefix as web inf slash view and suffix as jsp so this will be prefixed and after that a logical view returned by the controller is the uh, that is welcome page this is the logical name uh, sorry this is the logical name so this will uh, this will prefix with this prefix so total path would be web inf slash view slash welcome page and this is the suffix so dot jsp so on this location web inf slash views slash welcome page dot jsp that will try to search in the uh, web inf folder and that will be found by the controller and same is going to forward to the client right once the view get resolved the view with the help of models data will be rendered back to the users right so to understand the spring mvc framework uh, just we take help of the spring hello world which we have created so let's go to the uh, every class so here we have a basically hello world controller right so let's try to understand this class so at the rate controller annotation marks the class as uh, a spring bean which may handle different http requests based on the mapping specified on the class or individual controller methods here request mapping annotation is used for mapping web request into a specific handler classes and the handler methods in our case we have applied it on the uh, class level 2 which says that this uh, class is default handler for all http uh, request of type slash right so here we have given the uh, uh, url as slash right so at the rate request mapping have several attributes like value methods params etc which may be used to narrow down your mapping to more specific selection so here in first method you can see in first method uh, does not have any url mapping declared right so it will be inherit the mapping from uh, mapping declare on the class level acting as a default handler for get request now second method you can see uh, due to the additional mapping declaration with value attribute uh, will serve the request of the uh, form welcome again attribute uh, attribute method is used to specify the type of the http request this method can serve you can uh, look at the return value from this method these values will be suffixed and uh, prefixed with the suffix and prefix defined in the uh, view resolver to form the real view file name right and uh, we have also welcome uh, page so this page will basically simply access the model value uh, which is sent by the controller so this here we have used jsp expression language right this value is coming from the controller right and why we are accessing with this basically we are using this key to access this value right which is coming from the service right uh, now we have a configuration file so a spring configuration file contains instruction for a spring to operate here we are using xml configuration but one can avoid xml configuration by using annotation based configuration and which will be our next topic uh, we have created a dispatcher server.xml in webinf folder right uh, note that you can name this file anything you like but uh, be sure to declare it is in web.xml so that we'll see in next video tutorial here also we have declared context common component is scan and base package we have given the com.infotech.controller tells a spring to a search uh, a project class path for all classes under the package specified with base package and look at the each class to see if it is annotated with the specific spring annotations like at the rate controller at the rate service at the rate repository at the rate uh, component etc and if it does then spring will register the class with the bean factory uh, as if you had typed in the, in the xml configuration files along with that we have declared a view resolver which will help controller to declare the response to appropriate views and finally we have a deployment uh, descriptor right that is called web.xml right and uh, here dispatcher service is the front controller which receives each request uh, and direct the request to the appropriate controller it is also responsible to, for directing the response from 
controller to appropriate views. Alright, so that's all in this video tutorial.